Among Us is taking off, but who's really winning might surprise you. The Brawl Stars World Finalists are locked in, Call of Duty Mobile Esports has one region to go, and Wild Rift's launch date is released. But fans want staff fired? the lineup for you there have been developments all around the world of the mobile esports industry some of the biggest stories that we've seen to date even we've got wild drift a game that is so hyped up they announced their release schedule that's going to be quite the story to get into though because there was backlash there's call of duty mobile who's wrapping up their regional qualifiers for the world championship event there's brawl stars who has locked in their world finals participants there's among us which is just taking over it seems uh, in the gaming industry Everybody is streaming it seemingly nowadays, but it has a really unique story and brings out a couple awesome characteristics of mobile as a platform that I want to highlight and some stakeholders benefiting that you may not expect. And also want to make sure that we can hit the lightning round, which is going to be rapid fire storylines of pretty much everything notable, uh, the most notable stuff that we've come across in the mobile esports industry, just to give a nice breadth of coverage here. Now, Call of Duty Mobile is a game that a lot of us in the mobile sports industry are rooting really, really hard for. Um, in my personal opinion, I think it's one of the few that really fit into what I call like a golden bullet mold for a game that can really take off in the mobile sports industry. In order to do that, I think it needs three things. It's got to be great for competition, but it's also got to be good for casual players because you need that player base that really scales to the point where you have eyeballs that can fuel an esports industry. And then it also has to have some sort of X factor because the reality of the situation is that there's so many good games right now that you need to differentiate and inspire people to download your game. Call of Duty is just one of these IPs that in the West is so massive. And that was evident actually right when Call of Duty Mobile as a game launched. It broke records by being the fastest game to 100 million downloads. It achieved that in a single week, the most downloads of any game over a one week period. And that really speaks to just how good of a job they did at appealing to the Call of Duty fan base around the, the launch of the game. Um, I recall even back then, console players and professionals in the Call of Duty League were talking about just how good of a game it was, how it respected the brand and the franchise's history by releasing these OG maps and guns. And I think there was actually a little bit of jealousy from that perspective, actually, by some of the players, which is kind of funny. Um, but it did such a good job right out of the gates. But it has a bit kind of stalled from an esports perspective because here we are over a, a year now from the game's launch and we're just getting into these esports broadcasts. Uh, but the esports broadcasts have gone really well. So we had the EU broadcast this last weekend. Um, there were some great storylines actually that developed. I was rooting for one of my favorite orgs, Hammers Esports. Uh, they do a great job supporting mobile esports. Um, unfortunately, they got knocked out. It was a double elimination bracket, and the winners actually had an incredible feat. Uh, they're called King's Clan, and they actually lost in the semifinal round uh, to uh, Singularity. But what ended up happening is they won through the loser's bracket to face them again in the finals and won two really dramatic best of five series. Both of them went to the fifth map. Uh, and it was absolutely incredible to watch. So I loved the quality of the broadcast. I think they did a great job keeping the pace up to keep casual players engaged, which is huge with mobile esports broadcasts. And they had a good injection of personalities. They actually brought in OG casters for Call of Duty esports, like Brycey. It was great to see him there. Uh, he's another panelist for the esports awards with me. And then uh, also some some content creators. So Bobby was brought on board to provide a really you know fan favorite type of perspective in that. So um, he did a great job casting his first and, and largest esports event up to that point. So um, <clears throat> there were, you know, a few steps along the way that maybe could have been done better uh, from like an esports operations perspective. You know, if you talk to some of the players that participated in this, they are <laughs> very vocal about uh, what happened with the phone situation. So Call of Duty Mobile Esports, of course, is sponsored by Sony Xperia. Sony's a, a really longstanding partner for Activision. And then they also uh, you know, brought a, a device partnership to light through this esports competition, which is great to see. Very common, of course, in the mobile. But what ended up happening is that the players were required to play on the Sony Xperia phone as part of this sponsorship. And uh, they were kind of <laughs> not as fast as they could be in getting the players the devices. And it was just kind of this recurring theme. Um, 
it's really hard as an esports player to develop this muscle memory and this mechanical reaction based on the size of the screen that you're used to, based on the very, very small movements that your fingers and thumbs have to make. Um, and then to have to change that, even like the, the way that the screen itself feels smooth is it does it stick a little bit more are you wearing thumb sleeves like there's so many variables uh when it comes to the device that you're actually playing on and perfecting your craft in um and and these players actually some of them didn't even get the device that they had to play on until the day before the event so really challenging circumstances for the players i definitely feel for them from that perspective uh, but they ended up getting them <laughs> and uh you know it's really great you know sponsors bring so much of a boost to esports um, obviously, with it being such a core revenue stream, so love to see device uh, companies come into the space and present themselves in this way. Um, I, I also know that actually Esports Engine was brought in a little bit late to help from a player support perspective. So love to see that <laughs> with such a like you know figurehead in the esports production space as a company like. Esports. Um, so I think that that definitely helped to bring things together, overcome some of those you know obstacles that happened a bit late, uh, and you know put on a great production. So really encouraging to see um, the North American finals are coming up actually this weekend. So keep an eye on, uh, on that. That's going to be going out on the official call of duty mobile YouTube channel and uh, cannot wait to see that action. That's going to be coming at you very shortly here. Stars. Now, the Brawl Stars World Finals event is set. All eight participants have been decided through a global regional qualifier process, and we have some incredible teams and stories uh, that have developed because of it. The front runners for this event, probably, it's debatable, but Code Magic has done a phenomenal job fighting through perhaps the toughest region in the game, uh, which is EU and NEA. So they probably are going to be near the top of the list. But another underdog a bit of a dark horse to take this competition is a team that's been on fire recently and that's the team coming out of north america they've actually won the last four months worth of regional qualifiers in order to leapfrog tempo storm and make it into this world finals event that's an incredible achievement um, it's even more incredible actually when you understand what they had to go through during that process the organization that they were formerly with omen elite had a really catastrophic failure. They actually got outed for a lot of sexual harassment going on at the organization and ended up disbanding, basically. So um, the owner left the mobile esports scene and a lot of other managers that were involved in that. Uh, some left, some didn't. Okay. But I think that uh, they all kind of understand that they need to change some of their behavior. But anyway, what a tough situation for the team uh, to be able to go through this and to have to stay focused during a literally, you know, do or die type of qualifying system. Um, and they did it. They won all four of the last months in the North American uh, region and made it into the world finals. This event is going to be happening November 21st and 22nd, and it is going to be a $1 million prize pool being given out at that event alone, which is pretty cool. Um, one other pretty cool side of this is that part of that prize pool is actually being funded through the sale of in-game items, which is awesome to see. You don't always see that level of commitment from a publisher, um, especially in mobile, where the regular player base is predominantly casual. They don't like to kind of force esports uh, on a way that isn't natural or meaningful to the everyday player. But the Brawl Stars team in particular seems to really have a great pulse on the community and just the sentiment and they know what's going to land with their players and they are acting confidently in this as well uh, to use this as an, uh, a tool basically to get the average player base excited about the esports so i love it um, it's a great sign for sure for this esport um, one other thing that i love to talk about with brawl stars even though it's not necessarily esports related but it's the series that supercell puts out as a regular uh, piece of content to inform the player base on game updates and features and it's called brawl talk um if you haven't heard of it look it up on youtube it is a fascinating series basically what they do is they put an immense amount of effort putting this high quality very short piece of content out to tell, tell everybody about game updates new skins new characters um it's phenomenal but they do it with a youtube premiere uh, and they have actually reached, uh, I think the record was 600,000 or maybe it was seven. I, I can't recall exactly, but it's a phenomenal uh, amount of viewership that is tuning in live 
for the release of this update. Um, just a phenomenal feat. YouTube gaming has also been really behind that as well to help make that such a, a big success and bring that in front of a lot of people. And uh, man, is it paying off. So uh, what's really unique about this World Finals event is that this broadcast is going to be put out in 13 different languages. You heard me right. Okay, 13 different languages. I think I've only heard an English broadcast confirmed for Call of Duty Mobile Esports. But even, even that, you know, 13 languages is just unheard of. I, I haven't seen that anywhere else. Uh, but that just speaks to how much of a global game Brawl Stars is, and particularly how much of a focus the Supercell team at Brawl Stars makes on giving really concise, you know, like pointed products for each regional audience. So they want to put, you know, really natural production on, even for, you know, regions that may be overlooked in other Love to see that. So um, some incredible storylines. Uh, one other thing that you're probably going to see in this World Finals event, which is something that Brawl Stars Esports has become known for, is their really fast-paced broadcast. So uh, they do a, a great job, probably more so than anybody else, at taking out downtime in their esports broadcasts. That's a strategy that they use, again, to kind of appeal to a casual audience, right? So they've recognized that during downtime uh, or just boring segments, uh, you'll lose viewers and especially ones that are casual and not quite as engaged. Uh, so that, you know, comes with pros and cons. It does take out other analyst segments, uh, it does take out discussion about team players and stories. So uh, that is definitely, you know, a reality of just focusing on gameplay, but it's led to much more consistent viewership throughout esports broadcasts and is a really unique element that uh, Brawl Stars has been able to leverage for them. So um, just a lot of, you know, like with everything, there's a lot of nuances, <laughs> but uh, definitely expect to see that again with a characteristically Brawl Stars uh, broadcast in November. So really looking forward to that. Cannot wait. Almost. <laughs> it is, but it just depends on where you live. So this last week or so has been a bit crazy if you're a fan of Wild Rift. There was a lot of teasing and promotions done over the last week or so uh, to really showcase the incredible gameplay that's being put into Wild Rift as a game. And there was a bit of convergence with other innovative technologies, commercials and other sponsorships done with Verizon 5G. They were able to showcase the game and the 5G technology at an Apple event. So talking about the hardware as well that they're able to leverage in order to bring this flagship mobile game to life. And it really is shaping up to be quite a beauty when it comes to software. Uh, it really is. I think it's going to be well positioned to be one of the most, if not the most, mechanically skilled mobile eSport. Uh, so that is very, very encouraging for this industry. And I love seeing it also paired with innovative technologies like the new Apple devices and Verizon's 5G technology. Obviously, when these get to be rolling out, especially with cloud gaming capabilities as well, this is going to really shape the landscape of mobile gaming and mobile esports. So um, it all came together in Riot's <laughs> announcement post that they made. And it, you know, it was a bit of a Jekyll and Hyde type of thing. Uh, there were so many great things that came out of it. Being able to talk about the dynamic gameplay that develops and the things that Riot has learned through this very intense beta process. Um, they've definitely done their due diligence in making sure that this game is going to be a huge hit and has developed very well. Um, but they did stumble a bit, it seems, because it caused a bit of a backlash from the fan base as far as what the release schedule is going to be. So um, I definitely understand both sides of this, but here's what happened. Um, <clears throat> they went into this video, it seems like, with a bit of a strategy of just being super positive, and I get that. Like, launching a new game, especially when there's a PC version that came before it, is a huge challenge. You have to really fight through that stigma and, you know, try to convey this in a persuasive way to everybody. We saw what happened with Diablo Immortal, right? So it's not an easy job, but um, what happens sometimes if you're overly positive is there can be a lack of communication on some of the neg negative stuff that happens, right? And that's important to be transparent about sometimes. So anyway, what ended up happening is that uh, there was backlash for three particular regions. First of all, for North America. Um, secondly, for Brazil in particular. And lastly, for India. So uh, the launch schedule is one that is going to be rolling out over time. Uh, they are starting by opening up the game to more regions in Southeast Asia, which is great. Um, and then in December, it's going to be opening up to Europe, Taiwan, Oceania, and Vietnam. 
Uh, but it's not going to be until spring 2021 that it's coming to the Americas. And that was really where a lot of this uh, negative toxicity came from. Um, <clears throat> you know, Riot is a North American company and, you know, they're hometown fans. <laughs> you know, we're a bit upset to see that they're going to wait a little bit longer. But look, great things take time. <laughs> so you can't be like too upset that they want to take a little bit more uh, time and effort and investment into making sure this is a really polished product. Um, and they want to, it seems like through this, be very diligent and intentional with how they roll out in the West. And that is also very encouraging. So there are positives in this. Um, Brazil, on the other hand, was a bit upset um, in particular because they already had access to the game in an alpha that was rolled out uh, previously. So, you know, they get a, a taste of the game and then suddenly it's like, oh, no, you're going to be one of the last to get it <laughs> in a full global release. So um, everybody in mobile knows that some of the most passionate fans I'm from Brazil, <laughs> and that includes positive and negative things sometimes. So um, that's definitely one of the things that you know stemmed this type of backlash. Um, and of course, another region that was not uh, mentioned actually at all in this release schedule was India. Of course, massive mobile region. So another hugely passionate and active player base when it comes to social media. So, um, you know, it's kind of like those three segments that are tough to let down. It's the North American crowd, the Brazilian mobile esports crowd, and the Indian mobile esports crowd. So oof. Uh, but with that said, totally understand Riot's perspective. You want to make sure that you release a great product. And I have to say this also to the mobile gaming community is that I don't care what a game does. Um, you don't go after staff members personally. It's just, it's not even fair because these staff members, and one of them that got the worst of it was the community manager, just being one of the more public figures. Um, people like that are off limits. I mean, they really go out on a limb to communicate things to the player base, which is not an easy task, right? Because you're also the brunt of negative sentiment as well. Um, we've seen that happen a lot as well, unfortunately, with Clash Royale's community manager or, or one of their public facing figures with Seth. Um, I consider him a friend. I, I think it's totally unfair how he had been treated as a balance uh, guy for Clash Royale. And, you know, any sort of activity like that to me is just completely wrong and off limits. So um, I definitely hate, hate, hate seeing that. <laughs> uh, so I do want to say, though, happy birthday. It was your birthday yesterday. Uh, Draggles, man, I hope that you had a great one. And we're all really behind you here. Those of us that are, you know, in the mobile esports industry. So uh, I'm sure that he's been through this before. Gamers are toxic. Like, you know, uh, it's probably not going to be the last of it, too. But Hopefully over time, the industry as a whole gets to be a little bit more mature um, to where stuff like, you know, slight delay in releasing a game is not going to be the end of the world for a while. So um, with that said, there are lots of questions that are yet to be answered. Uh, we still want to know <clears throat> what the future of this eSport is going to look like. There's a lot of hype, obviously, around it because it looks like it's well positioned to be one of, if not the leading mobile eSport in the West, uh, just like with Call of Duty Mobile, being able to leverage a huge IP in the West is already a massive advantage. And you also see a lot of activity on the esports side, not necessarily tournaments or events, but through promotional posts or uh, there's a Wild Drift Invitational tournament that's going to be happening soon. Um, another one of those partnerships with Verizon. Um, but in that, they're able to get together a lot of league PC celebrities. And it's great to see crossover like that. You know, um, it takes games a while sometimes to even consider that but the fact that this is part of the launch strategy is really really encouraging um <clears throat> but the question is still where is it going to fit in right so this may be one that out of the gates is going to have the most attention from orgs and organizers people are already talking about running community events and you know production companies that have their eye on it and literally everybody in the industry right so um where that is going to settle over time we're going to have to wait and see and then again, there's also that looming question, uh, just like with Call of Duty Mobile, which is how does this fit in to the other platforms export, right? Because these are valuable slots, the franchise slots in these premier esports. Um, and then suddenly here's this mobile version that comes up as perhaps more players than the other version. Uh, and it's kind of like the new kid on the block, but it's also going to be the Wild West, <laughs> at least out of the gates. So uh, time will tell. But a lot of interest already. There was G2 Carlos that was tweeting about it. And um, yeah, this is going to be incredible. It's going to be like a sea of piranhas or, <laughs> you know, as soon as this game comes out globally, there's going to be so much activity. 
Um, I definitely just encourage anybody that wants to pursue this or enter the game as a content creator, as a player, um, start early. Like there are a lot of people already grinding full time right now just to get to know the game. They're grinding, you know, Mobile Legends and Arena of Valor and have been for months just to learn the mechanics and the concepts and the gameplay. Um, so, you know, if you really want to be the best in this, you got to sacrifice more. <laughs> it's just the reality because there's so many people that also want this. So, um, but be smart about it too. You know, um, it, this is a title where there may be a big wave out of the gates. So just make sure that you're ready to take advantage of that when it happens. So um, with that said, I, you know, we're all really, really excited for Wild Rift in the West. Again, really well positioned to be the leading game uh, from a mobile esports perspective. And uh, I think mobile gamers are going to get over this large schedule very quickly. There's a pretty short attention so <laughs> from a lot of people. Um, and uh, it's going to be incredible. I cannot wait. And uh, I will definitely be seeing you on the rift. If you're in the esports industry, you have got to have heard of Among Us at this point. It is just completely taking over, um, especially on streaming platforms where it seems to be the game of choice for so many creators. But how exactly did this game get here and why is it relevant from a mobile perspective? A lot of people actually don't know this, but the game launched over two years ago. And yet it's only been the last few months that it's really caught fire and skyrocketed to the extent that it has. Uh, and it's kind of interesting actually how that developed. The game at its low point actually only had just over four players online at any given point. Uh, and it's hard to imagine that that's even possible considering where the game is at this stage. Just recently a report was released that they had 3.8 million players online at any given point uh, at a single time, 3.8 million. What in the world? They broke the servers <laughs> and the game had to like refresh and everything, but um, that is almost unheard of in the gaming industry, period. And it really speaks to the level of cultural relevance that this title has been able to reach. And I think that a couple of the main reasons why it's accomplished that align really well with mobile gaming and bring out and leverage the strengths of mobile as a platform. Um, but I know that a lot of people don't really consider it a mobile game. Uh, a lot of streamers do use their PC and stuff, so it isn't really put into the mobile bucket. And I do understand that the lines of platforms are kind of blurring as there's more cross-play and platform agnostic launches. But when you take a look at the player base of this title, it actually becomes really apparent just how significant the mobile accessibility has been on the impact of this game and its rise to, to fame here. If you look at this chart, I may have to zoom in. That middle section, the green one, is the only share of player base that is on PC. That is the Windows uh, player segment. On top is iOS and on the bottom is Android. But that really puts into perspective just how much of a mobile game this is and how that accessibility has led to its quick, quick rise and cultural relevance. It's also one that is really accessible for the average player. You don't have to have a huge amount of mechanical skill to play the game. There's not a learning curve, really, as other games may have at the start. And so pretty much anybody can get involved in play. We saw that even recently with a couple congresswomen from the United States that ended up hopping in and uh, playing with some of the largest streamers in the world, Pokimane, Dr. Lupo, and uh, AOC's stream. That congresswoman actually went over 400,000 concurrent viewers on her broadcast on Twitch. That is just remarkable. And uh, what's really interesting that you may not know about about this title is that it's actually been a saving grace for some of the largest streamers in the world. I want to take Mortal as an example. Of course, one of the largest, if not the largest, mobile esports streamer out in India. He got popular because of PUBG Mobile as a game, but recently that game was banned in India. And so suddenly he and all of his fans were looking around wondering what in the world they're going to do. And Mortal, of course, is somebody whose livelihood depends or depended on this game uh, is suddenly without it. So he started to look around, became a bit more of a variety streamer, and it was really among us that he's latched onto and found a ton of success. And if you look at his growth rate, he's actually gone up from a viewership perspective 
after the point that PUBG Mobile got banned, which is just not what you would expect <laughs> if your game that has taken over that region gets banned. Uh, but I think that that's a testament to the impact that he has even and how a lot of players, uh, mobile gamers in the region look to him as a trendsetter to know what is going to be the next big thing. And Among Us, of course, being such a great social game, captivating, uh, leads to just such entertaining streams. One other impact that you may not have guessed has been a spike in downloads of Discord, of all things. Discord, of course, is one of the most popular uh, communication apps for gamers and people have been using it in order to hop into voice calls and play among us basically with their friends and family and it, it is just basically skyrocketed from a download perspective take a look at this chart this is actually showing you two different spikes that first one is the spike after the pandemic hit and everybody started gaming a lot more at home and using discord to connect with friends that they didn't get to see in person every day at school and stuff like that uh, but that second spike is actually bigger and that's attributed almost entirely to the rise of among us as a game and so these social apps that are becoming so much more common especially on mobile a platform that really innovated the clan systems and the social pressures of playing and getting to engage with people. Um, that is so much more powerful on mobile as a platform, and we're seeing that because of the rise of Among Us as well. Uh, interestingly enough, this is also a target, an area that a lot of publishers are trying to lean into as well. Um, title, uh, titles like Fortnite and Epic Games acquiring communication apps and social play apps like House Party. Um, so lots of other ones popping up like Bunch and Game Gather. So this is definitely not the end of social gaming features. And uh, I think mobile especially is really well positioned to innovate there from a technology perspective. the lightning round i'm going to try to get through as many stories that i've come across in the mobile esports industry and give a really quick take so i'm going to start off with a doozy loud gaming signs for exclusive streaming rights with twitch now this is a big deal on both sides actually so for loud this is the mobile esports organization out of brazil that rose to prominence incredibly fast because of free fire and particularly what they've done on the content side i will die on this hill i think that they are the best content esports now their youtube channel is taking off uh, they were actually the first esports organization of any platform to reach 1 billion views on the official esports organization account. Um, nobody else, frankly, is even in their own stratosphere when it comes to their growth rate. Uh, they were able to accomplish that in 16 months, whereas it took some esports organizations 15 years to get to their levels and they're far below. Um, since they accomplished that a, a little over a few months ago, uh, they have actually already gotten to 1.5 billion views and are nearing 10 million subscribers on the organization's YouTube account. This is a massive, massive deal to bring all of their creators uh, from a streaming perspective over to Twitch as a platform. And Twitch as well hasn't up to recently been the first platform that comes to mind when you think about mobile streaming, uh, but they have been making some strides. They are focusing on Brazil as a region strategically to enter mobile. Uh, and especially with this, with Wild Rift coming out, which already has strong ties with Twitch, uh, for Riot at least, that is definitely uh, something that's gaining momentum. So a massive deal to start off the lightning round here. Um, we also have Team Queso partnering with Samsung as the official device company. I love as well seeing Team Queso continue to grow because they are an organization that I personally go back with a lot. Uh, through my start in Clash Royale, they're a phenomenal organization. Alvaro's done a phenomenal job over there as well. Incredible team behind Team Queso. And Samsung, of course, one of the two primary partners right now for devices, at least in the mobile esports industry, them and OnePlus. Um, so great to see Samsung continuing to stay active. Um, OnePlus is certainly, at least in the West, uh, one of the more uh, prominent device partners. Um, Ethos Esports raises $12 million in a financing round. This is an incredible organization. If you're not aware of them, um, they're an Indonesian-based esports organization that is actually mobile first in their strategy. So uh, they are you know, active in a lot of the mobile esports in Southeast Asia with mobile legends, uh, et cetera. And they actually have designed their content strategy around Instagram <laughs> of all places. So unlike the traditional model for PC or console-based esports scenes where you know, 
create content and put it on YouTube and then make it on Twitter and like all these other ones, um, Boss has started with a mobile platform with Instagram and has created a really unique structure. It's actually quite a insight into what a mobile first org uh, can do from a content perspective because they're starting there. So anyway, they do a great job of promoting player brands and uh, really engaging content on, on Instagram. And uh, definitely uh, a huge move for them to be able to raise up their um, mobile legends. I was just talking about it. They had their grand finals recently and they hit 611,000 peak current viewers. Uh, this was broken by uh, Fuez. So I love to see as well YouTube gaming getting involved with mobile esports in a huge way. Um, they are obviously the dominant player right now when it comes to live streaming capabilities and viewership uh, in the mobile esports space. Massive, obviously the, the go-to place for VODs in gaming, period, um, but also from a mobile esports perspective, one of the most active and, and largest uh, player bases uh, of active esports fans. So um, definitely no exception here with the Mobile Legends Grand Finals event that just took off. Brawl Stars, this is a bit of a curveball, but they released a map maker functionality. This I have my eye on because it's one of the first mods where you as a fan can actually create your own Brawl Stars map and share that with people in the game. So are we going to see, you know, community created game maps or game modes integrated into Brawl Stars in the future? Who knows? I mean, a lot of huge esports have started off because it started off as a game mod that a fan made. So uh, definitely going to be really interested to see what the creative binds in the Brawl Stars community. And the last one here for the lightning round is T1, a massive Korean esports organization. They signed the Korean Call of Duty mobile champions from the regional competition uh, and are going to be represented at the World Championship event later this year. So what an amazing lineup of developments. Uh, premier esports organizations, mobile first organizations, all continuing to rise, raise money, sign huge deals. Uh, what a time. <laughs> what a time to be in the mobile esports industry. And that has been the lightning round. gonna do it that was the first ever episode of the mobile mat show i hope you all enjoyed that that was kind of fun to put together and i want to give a huge shout out first of all to everybody helping on this show behind the scenes we've got a huge group together to bring all of the stories that we can find in the mobile esports industry and the ones that matter most in this episode so um we're going to continue bringing these episodes out if you want to see more please smash that like button help support the series and uh let us know what you think as well in the comments i want to make sure that this is an open forum forum for people to discuss the mobile esports industry and to really refine your own knowledge about it. So please engage, you know, give us comments about things that we can do to improve. I'm all about constructive feedback and making sure that we can keep this going and getting better every week. So um, we're definitely going to continue doing that. There's also going to be a Discord server set up where uh, we're going to have a lot of people involved from the mobile esports industry in there talking about the latest news and stuff. So if you'd like to be part of that community, that will be in the description as well. And don't be a stranger. I've got my socials in the description. We can definitely connect. I try to make as much time as possible for people that want to learn this industry. So uh, let's keep this ball rolling. Go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you back for the next one.